This is the very illustrious Mortimer Jr. Named for his late father, Mortimer Whistlepig, husband of Mav Whistlepig. Both passed, unfortunately. Mortimer and Mav were actually the original Whistlepig mascot. So it was only fitting that when, unfortunately, Mortimer passed away back in 2014, we had to commemorate him with a whiskey. But anyways, we're really hoping Mortimer Jr. doesn't have a whiskey named after him for quite a while. Welcome to the farm, guys. I'm so pumped to have you here. We're gonna do some fun, unique things. You guys are coming from the culinary world where you're used to taking great ingredients, making something unique, making something unrivaled, making something truly premium. Here, we're gonna do the same exact thing, but in my world. We're gonna travel around the farm. I'm gonna show you guys what I call home. We're gonna taste the things that make this whiskey unique, get to know these individual components, decide how we can maybe put a spin on this, make our own little chef's blend. Without further ado, cheers. cheers. Thanks for coming, guys. Absolute pleasure. So we are here in the Sugar Shack. We're gonna taste the first of a couple different finishes. Now, this is gonna be the Madeira finish, is what makes up the bulk of the 12 here. We're gonna taste it and find out exactly why. We talk about building a house. Step one, you've gotta pour the foundation, you've gotta build the frame of it, right? That's what this Madeira finish is. It's that base layer, that foundation, that structure that then we can put siding onto, and that then we can put flooring into, drywall can go up. So first things first, we need to have our Madeira in place. Good so, place to start. Good place to start, exactly, I would say. So what do you guys think of this whiskey? I, mean, I definitely like the leathery thing and the definitely spice. Absolutely. You can know how to pair. A lot of pear. There you get go. A lot of pear out of it. Is it a sweeter pear or is it a fruitier? No, it's more. Right? Well, no, it's like it's just sort of like that base. One interesting question I like to ask people when it comes to blending is, what don't we taste? You know, what do you wish it had, or what do you wish it didn't? Have? And that's something important going forward when we look at what our final product is going to be. Again, we start basic and we work our way up, and we're able to work as a team. So, you guys think we've had enough of Madeira or what? Yeah, I've drank yeah. all of it. Welcome to the church mill. Here we're gonna be tasting the Sautern finish. The Sautern finish comes from, believe it or not, Sautern casks. Step one is always finding the right casks, but the best version of those right casks. On the nose, this really shines for you. So there's a lot of great balance, sweetness, a bit of a floral backbone as well. What are you guys picking up here yourselves? So I'm, mainly, I'm mainly picking up vanilla. Vanilla. I feel like my nose is completely blown out because I smell like teriyaki sauce sweet. Like, that was like maple syrup sweet. Sure. This is like a more savory sweet. Yes, that's not uncommon. It's almost meaty sweetness in a sense. You know, savory, meaty. It does come across, especially in a rye whiskey that's gonna have more age to it, as a bit beefier. Because those flavors so don't wrong. typically associate. <laughs> that's why. That's why. It smells like Panda Express. Yeah, oh God. General <laughs> So, is that you? <laughs> Thank you for not making me no, look no, like an no. idiot. No, I oftentimes, <laughs> I oftentimes pick that up myself is with this specific finish. You get a lot of sweetness up front, but it kind of finishes short. It is a little lacking on the back end. So when it comes to structuring this whiskey's place in a larger blend, that's what we want to think about. Maybe we don't want so much sweetness, but we can capture that positive front end sweetness and mitigate that back end astringency, harshness, tannin, whatever you want to call it, in a way that gives us the best possible version of this whiskey. So now that we've tried the Sauternes finish, guys, let's move along the tour and try the next finish. Hatchet saber that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got it, I got it, it's fine. All right, so we've tried two finishes already, seeing how they kind of play on their own, the spice we're getting from that Madeira, that sweetness up front from the Sauternes. Let's see what's going on in the back end. Try some port finish, 12 year. So you're gonna get a lot of interesting notes from this right off the bat. Very aromatic, very fruity. Mm -hmm. It's a very rich, very complex whiskey. Definitely drinks like it. You're gonna to wanna to think about the Madeira finish as well while you're nosing and tasting this. Now, the lack of a finish on the Sauternes, this could not be more different. This thing finishes for days. It really sticks with you, gives you some of that fruit, but it's not overly sweet. We don't want an overly sweet finish. If anything, we'd prefer a bit of oak, a bit of spice, and we want it to last and stay with you and let you remember it. So the place in the blend for the port, and we'll see this as we make our blends, but it's a tricky place. There's a reason why in the regular Old World product, it's only 7% of the blend. It can make or break the blend based on how much you use it. Really either will overpower or add a nice complement to your Sautern Madeira inputs. You can tell that they all need each other. Right. Like Precisely. Yeah. This, you don't want too much of this because it is so rich and round. And then the Sauternes was so 
lack of a better term, like one note. So it needs this. Absolutely. And then both of these kind of need some of the fruitiness on the nose with the uh, Dira. And also exactly. where they all are on your palate. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's like we're building this house. You're seeing how those can layer on one another, right? We've got that Madeira. We're going to make a nice base. That Sauterne is incomplete by itself. They all sort of are. Like you said, they need each other. It's almost a beautiful codependency. So now that we've tried all three finishes, guys, we're going to head on down to the distillery. We're going to check out what's going on down there. From there, we'll go on and make our blends. We got to throw hatches now that we've had some. Oh, we've got to throw yeah. some hatches, yeah. my Safety friend. Lasts. Absolutely. Safe. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> We've got another little special finish here. So we have in our hands an Oloroso Sherry finished rye whiskey. You guys pick up any notes on this that are worth mentioning? What do we think? I find this one sweeter. The sweet go. stays with me. Very nice, okay. Whereas and the, it comes across differently too, right? right? With the Sauternes, the sweet was fast. Like you, you got it and it was gone. Whereas exactly. this one like rolls around in your mouth a little more. So we might want to use this to balance out that sweetness, almost in place of the Sauterne. Additionally, because it does have much more of a palate presence throughout. Got to finish too. It's got mid palate weight too. It's got a good mouth feel, right? Yeah, it's richer. It is an issue. Exactly, it's very rich. You can just pick a lot more out of it. Absolutely. So you're getting a lot of complexity, a lot of angles of yeah. flavor. You're getting something up front. The aromatics are very pleasing as well. That heat is tamped down nicely too. We've allowed it to sit in that barrel, oxidize more heavily, and lose some of these harsher alcohols as well. This as a blending tool is gonna be something we're gonna wanna definitely think a lot about in terms of adding nuance, adding complexity, but also overshadowing some maybe negative notes that are coming from the other finishes that we don't wanna include. I like it on its own. Yeah, this yeah, yeah I do too. So I'm gonna There's introduce the one rule, which is you can't just do 100% Oloroso sure. as your blend. <laughs> <laughs> Now that we've tasted all of our four separate finishes, gotten to know them a little bit better, let's move on to the next step. While we're here, we're gonna make our own versions of 12 Year. And we're gonna decide what is the chef's blend? What does that mean to all of us? We're gonna then make that blend a reality. What I think was amazing about that process was how much it is curated from finding really good barrels to knowing your history of each barrel as it comes to you. If the people who had whatever spirited before, whether it be port or sherry, were treating those barrels with respect, and so when they are still in a great pristine condition and they're ready to leach out those flavors that you want. Learning about how the cask finishes interact with each other when they're blended kind of wasn't really one plus one equals two. They really changed each other when they were mixed together and different blends yielded results that you couldn't have anticipated or expected. I made a blend and I was pretty happy with it. And then I made the blend again with basically just 10% difference and it was so different. Like not 10% different, it was like 90% different. Mixing the whiskeys together was such a phenomenal experience. Tasting the different ages and then adding the Madeira, the Port, the Sauternes and the Sherry was like, each finish on its own was completely unique, but they all definitely needed each other to make one cohesive drink. But it's so tasty. I thought it was pretty delicate and gentle, which I was surprised that a bunch of chefs came up with something that was so just like easy going. <laughs> it was good. I'm super stoked about how the blend came out. It's delicious. I really love it. I wish I could drink more of it. So guys, we're up here at the Mausoleum. This is our memorandum for our beloved pigs, Mortimer and Mav. This is their eternal resting place. They will be missed forever and ever, and we'll always be able to come visit them if we want. Now we have a little ceremony we like to perform in their honor, and I'd like for you to join in with me. Take the ceremonial copper pot, take the 100% rye distillate right here. We don't like to waste around here, but we do like to memorialize things. With our new make spirit, we have our flame. In honor of our beloved pigs, we will scatter these ceremonial bacon bits. And with that, it'll only be fair that we have something to toast our beloved pigs with. What better than the chef's blend? And this is the blend that we decided on, folks. And I'd like to serve it up to you in commemoration of our beloved pigs. Cheers, folks. And thanks for coming. Chef's Blend 2019. 
Chef Splend. Great work, guys. I couldn't be more proud of you.